Hello and welcome to this edition of the Indiana State Police Public Information Program. I'm your host, Sergeant Dave Burston, Public Information Officer for the Indiana State Police at the Indianapolis Post. For this program, we have a guest from the Indiana State Police Youth and Historical Center, Trooper Dave Verhonic, and he's going to be telling us all about the youth camps that are getting ready to start for this summer. So if you have teenagers, even fourth or fifth graders that are around, let them watch. They may find something of interest here to attend one of the state police camps. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. and not the 60s. In a world this dangerous, there's no such thing as a harmless drug. Talk to your kids about marijuana. That doesn't convince you to take math courses. I don't know what will. Call NACME. We'll tell you what you need to do. doesn't just kill drunk drivers. Next time your friend insists on driving drunk, do whatever it takes to stop him. Hello and welcome back to the program. As I said, our guest today is Trooper Dave Verhonic. Uh, he used to work out of the Indianapolis Post, and Dave, you also used to be on the Governor's Security, didn't you? I did that for six and a half years, Dave. As a matter of fact, I'd like to spend just a, a minute or so uh, talking about your career and what your assignment is now. Uh, when did you come on the State Police? In 1980. Okay, and I think you were the class of right after mine I think did you come on the middle of 80 late 80 that is correct so yes. so we both uh, celebrating coming up on 17 we're both years. old timers yeah you know, get, getting that way <laughs> I don't think I'm that old yet so uh, how did your career progress well I spent two years at Terre Haute spent five in Indianapolis as a road trooper did six and a half years on the governor's detail with Governor Orr and Governor By, mm -hmm. and a year in our wellness program and now I've been a year and a half as a youth services coordinator for the Indiana State Police youth camps and that's what uh, brings you out here today to talk about the youth camps. That's correct. Something in, I believe in wholeheartedly. I, and I do too, uh, just by virtue of the fact that I uh, attended one of the camps uh, as a teenager right? myself. Uh, so when we look at the youth camps, can you give a little bit of history about the youth camps? Sure, Dave, I'd love to. Our camps were, were born in 1971. At that time, you know, we had rather turbulent society and, and our camps were born to give uh, youth a, a little different aspect of police work, mm -hmm. uh, trying to develop that rapport between the young person and the authority figure and or the police departments. Uh, in 1971, we had one camp. Today, we have 19 camps serving almost 1,500 young Hoosiers each summer. And those camps are pretty much geographically all over the state, aren't they? Pretty much. Uh, there are some areas where we'd still like to reach out to, like the northwestern part of the state, but we pretty much cover the rest of the state, central, north, and south. And uh, the camps, of course, are run at colleges and universities as well as state parks. Now, is the, is the general purpose of the camp, as it has evolved, is it to provide uh, background to somebody that may have an interest in a law enforcement career, or are there different methods or approaches? What, what's the reasoning to the camps as they exist today? I'd, I'd say a couple of main reasons. As you said, people that are, have a bent towards law enforcement mm -hmm. 
or just young people that are interested in having a good time uh, observing some exciting police demonstrations at different camps. But we also have camps that uh, we use kids that are referred to us by different uh, agencies of, of the state. For instance, mm -hmm. the uh, probation departments, the welfare departments, uh, even school counselors. Those We have seven of those camps that are geared primarily to kids that have been having a little bit of a problem so adapting. So you have, have some camps for what we might, for lack of better terminology, call at-risk children who may that, have had some brushes with the law. That is correct, yes. So, now when we, uh, when we look at the, the uh, different types of camps, and we're, we're going to be getting ready to take a break here in a minute or so, mm -hmm. but can you just tell what the different camps are, and when we come back from the break, we'll tell what each one of them uh, is in depth. I'd be happy to do that. We have a Respect for Law camps for grades 4, 5, and 6. Mm -hmm. We have Law camps for kids in grades 7 and 8. And then we have career camps for kids nine, grades 9 through 12. And then we have seven camps, as I mentioned, the Pioneer Campouts, which are held at state parks. And those are for kids ages 11 to 14. And we do accept referrals on those camps. And uh, is the Pioneer Camp more for the at-risk? That is youth. correct, okay. yes. Thank you for clarifying that. So, mm -hmm. now when, when we look at, at the camps and the availability, so basically age, uh, grades four, that'd be about age uh, nine, eight, nine? Ten. Ten, ten age yeah. ten, mm -hmm. and then when we go through 12 through age 18. That is correct, yes, so, mm -hmm. through all the way through high school. And you have had children in the past, young adults, that have uh, kind of progressed through all of the camps. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's not absolutely necessary that that happens. I mean, you can start at the high school level, but a lot of our kids have such a good time at the Respect for Law Camp, we find that they go on to law and on to career. And the good part about that is that uh, I encourage our camp directors not to have the program duplicate itself year to year. So kids going each year will get some new exposures each year. So to they different see kinds. something a little bit different each year. That is correct, yes. We're going to take a break, and as soon as we come back, we're going to talk about each individual uh, camp experience and, and what a child or young adult could expect to see. So please stay tuned. We'll be right back. I need a chance. I need peace. I need friends who care about me. Most of all, what I need is for you to get lost. The next time a pusher asks you what you need, let him know. The 60s. In a world this dangerous, there's no such thing as a harmless drug. Talk to your kids about marijuana. So, your name's John, right? Yeah. And you said you still smoke pot once in a while? Yep. You remember the first time you tried it? Pretty much. How old were you? Twelve. You ever move on to anything harder, like coke or acid? Or no, anything? man, nothing like that. Not till I was 14. In advertising, they say one of the surest ways to get your message across is to put celebrities in your commercial. We hope they're right.
Welcome back to the program. If you're just joining us, we are talking uh, with Trooper Dave Verhonick, and we're talking about the uh, number, uh, the numerous different types of state police youth camps. And uh, in the previous segment, uh, you just went briefly and you named all the camps, and I'd like to talk about each one of them a little bit more in detail. Sure. And let's start mm -hmm. with the camp for the at-risk youth. Yes, Dave, that's uh, called our J.C. Junior Pioneer Camp Out. That is for young people. I might say they're all co-ed camps, uh, age 11 to 14. Okay, so and male and female, age male, 11 to 14. That's correct. And these camps are run at state parks. Uh, we have a maximum of 20 youth that attend these camps. There's seven of them. Uh, we have a ratio of camper to counselor of two campers for every counselor. So the ratio of young people is good. And so they're very, they're closely supervised. Exactly. And uh, discipline, of course, is a key here. But our primary aim is developing that rapport between the police officer and or the authority figure and the young person. How would a typical day at this camp uh, go? Well, there's a lot of things. Normally, we, we rise fairly early, and of course, our meals are all provided by the Indiana Junior Chamber of Commerce, or the JCs. So mm -hmm. they provide three meals for us each day. So we start off with breakfast. Uh, then we have, uh, we try to use the state park facilities as much as we can, the swimming pools, take them on nature hikes. Uh, some of the camps, like at Turkey Run, we have a canoe trip that we take. So there's a lot of different activities at using the state park facilities. But as well, we bring in a lot of exciting police demonstrations. Some of our specialty teams come in, like our bomb squad and our ERT teams. and our dogs come in and do special programs for the young people to help make the program exciting. And then this lasts how long? We start on a Monday and the program is over on Thursday afternoon. Okay, so it's uh, so four days. Staying, four days, three nights. Right. Correct. Now, to put something of this uh, magnitude together, you have a lot of supporting services. I think the National Guard is involved. Absolutely. The National Guard provides both our tentage which we have a, a male tent and a female tent, as well as a... a it's good at that <laughs> age to keep them <laughs> right, separated. Right. Yeah, so. And then we also have a, an academic tent that, we, that doubles as our uh, place where we have our meals. And the National Guard is, is wonderful in supplying that, as well as they supply at least one and sometimes two staff members to serve on our counselor staff as well. And then I've already so. mentioned Indiana JCs that provide meal support, and we also have a lot of JC involvement coming out to the camps and getting involved with the young people. Now, uh, the youth that attend that camp, they have to be referred through a service? That is correct. Generally, we, we call this our at-risk camps, and I could say, uh, you know, the welfare department, the probation department, school counselors refer kids to our camps. But to be honest with you, even some parents that may be having uh, some trouble with direction of the young people, uh, we would accept those kinds of referral as well. And, and we know that we make a difference, and these camps do make a difference. What's the cost of that camp? It's $50 uh, for the four days, so it's oh. relatively inexpensive. Yeah, and that's including all the meals, that the activities correct. that are planned for, so all of those things are Yeah, covered. and each, each young person gets a camp T-shirt as well as some, a canteen and some other little giveaway items that we, the state police provides. Now, have you, uh, in the time that you've been associated with it, have you seen any particular success stories come out of that particular camp? Well, absolutely. Uh, some of the referrals that we get, of course, come with sad stories attached. And I could think of one camp uh, where we had a young person that basically was being kicked out of his county and nobody could do anything with him. And, and to be real honest with you, uh, on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, he was a real challenge to us. But uh, on Thursday, uh, he kind of turned it all around and he actually got the Outstanding Camper Award. Did he for really? The camp. Yes, and it was... Uh, don't know if it's going to make a difference for a lifetime, but uh, hopefully it does. Well, the, uh, the lifetime difference has to start with a, a positive step in the right direction. Exactly. And uh, maybe that camp helped uh, provide that. We like to think so. So, And again, there are seven of those camps that are That's running correct. throughout different times throughout the summer yes. and in different state parks around the state. That is correct. So. Uh, if somebody wanted to refer a child, they could either call uh, the uh, youth center Youth Services. Youth yeah. Services mm -hmm. Center. Mm -hmm. And we'll have that phone number later, or they could contact their local welfare authority. Or probation department or whatever. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Please stay tuned. We've got lots more for you, and we're going to tell you about the other camps, too. So we'll be right back after these messages. Can you find the drug pusher in this picture? It's hard to believe kids this young are at risk because someone their age may 
be offering them drugs. Someone they think is their friend. Talk to your kids about drugs. Tell them that anyone who offers them drugs is not a friend. And here comes Chris Hill, four feet six out of Jefferson Elementary, a confident young man with a great stride, but uh-oh, he might be in trouble now. Hey, Chris, wanna get high? No way, man, this stuff's for losers. Oh, what a move, Chris Hill never hesitates, just blows past that guy, Bob. You're right, Mike, look, Chris is known for his great head shake, then he shifts his weight to the right foot, finds a hole, and zip, he's out of there. Spectacular, just spectacular. This kid's got a bright future. Hello and welcome back to the program. If you're just joining us, we are talking about the State Police Career Youth Camps uh, that are sponsored by a number of organizations, Kiwanis and Optimus uh, organizations. And we were just talking about the, re the uh, Pioneer Camp for the at-risk youth. And what I'd like to do now, Dave, is if you can uh, tell our viewers how the camps progress from the, uh, from, uh, the smaller grades or younger children on forward. Be happy to, Dave. Uh, the camps we're going to talk about now are camps that are run at colleges and universities. Uh, Notre Dame, Hanover, Marion College, Huntington College, mm -hmm. Vincennes University. We start out with camps for young people, once again co-ed camps for grades four through six. Those are called the Optimist Respect for Law Camp. Okay. Then we have the camps for junior high age youth, a co-ed again, uh, grades seven and eight, and those are sponsored by the co-sponsored by the Lions Club. And then, of course, we have our kind of the parent of all the camps, which is the high school camps. The yes, they are, they're called career camps, and they're co-sponsored by the Kiwanis Clubs of Indiana. Now, let's take a look at the Respect for Law Camp, which is uh, that's the fourth and fifth graders primarily. Uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Fourth, actually. fifth, and sixth. Mm -hmm. So, how long? What's the duration of that camp, and what are some of the experiences the uh, the kids would have? What those camps are three days and two nights, and the, some of the experience that they have once again are are exciting police demonstrations, uh, scuba teams, uh, SWAT teams, bomb squads coming in and doing demonstrations for the young people. Uh, those camps, uh, like I say, are run at. There's seven of those camps, and they're run at primarily Notre Dame, Hanover, Vincennes University. So again, geographically covering well the state. Around That's the state. our goal. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. Now, with, uh, with participation with that age group, with the 4th, 5th, and 6th graders, how much does that camp cost? That costs $75. Okay, and mm -hmm. with, from that, that can either be paid by mom and dad, or th uh, is there s some s type of financial aid that's available for those? Well, generally what happens, Dave, is once again, the Optimist Clubs do a wonderful job of providing uh, support, financial mm -hmm. support, uh, by ways of scholarships for young people. So they could contact youth services or their local Optimist Clubs uh, provide a lot of scholarship support there. So what I like so, to tell kids is don't let the money be a deterrent for you wanting to go to okay. camp. If you want to go to camp, contact us. Now, from the, uh, from the Respect for Law and how we move to the junior high camp, which is called the Law Camp. The Law Camp. And it's a little more in-depth experience. It's four days and three nights. Run, camps are run at Taylor University, also at Vincennes University. And once again, co-ed. Same kinds of experiences. Maybe we do have one day that's in, in, devoted to field trips where young people go to a courtroom setting. They might go to a jail and take a tour of that facility. Go to a state police post and a state police laboratory. So all incorporated into their program. So this is giving them a, a good overview of the criminal justice system, particularly through through a law enforcement officer's point of view. Exactly, and we try to make it once again fun and exciting for them. Now from, uh, and, and I, I don't remember if I asked, what's the cost for that one? You didn't. It's $95 okay. for four days and three nights. So again, and that covers all of the uh, the food, the lodging, uh, exactly extracurricular. But and here, here again, Dave, let me let me okay. add one thing. The Lions Clubs uh, for our junior high camps provide a lot of not only field trip support but scholarship support. Lions Clubs of Indiana. Now, as, aside from what the Lions Club and Optimists and and Kiwanis organizations do, even though it's all the costs are inclusive, uh, the uh, the kids should bring some spending money, shouldn't they? Well, there's a few things. We have canteens, uh, which some of our camp directors provide for the young people. So we try to keep that down to a minimum, massive bring to more than $20. So, mm -hmm. And that uh, for some little extra things that they may want to do themselves. I know uh, my experience of, from being a counselor in the career camp, which we're going to talk about uh, probably in our next segment, um, 
usually we have a pizza night out, and that's exactly. above and beyond the normal thing. Right, so. yeah. And we do uh, provide the local sale items at some of our camps as well uh, for, for young people. Ball cap. Yeah, state it's police memorabilia perfect. thing. Exactly, so. yes. And I, I still have a keychain from uh, from the one that I went to. Yeah, you're one of our success stories, oh, Dave. That, well, I hope I'm considered <laughs> a success story. So, yeah. but uh, and so that now we see how the cost of the camps has graduated up. Uh, right. So from the respect for law camp, seventy five dollars, ninety five dollars for the law camp, and the uh, the experience has become longer. And when we come back from the break, we'll talk about the big one, the state police career camp. So please stay tuned. We're going to be right back. We've got lots more for you. just kill drunk drivers. Next time your friend insists on driving drunk, do whatever it takes to stop him. Man, a four-letter word, right? Hey, you don't need that. Why design the world's newest jets? <laughs> when you could be flipping the world's oldest burgers. Hey, wait a minute. This is math. Geometry, algebra, no pocket protectors here. But you're cruising without math. You're yeah, right. Take a good look. That's math staring back at you. It's not a problem, man. It's an answer. Call NACME. We'll tell you what you need to do. Hello and welcome back. If you're just joining us, uh, you are in tune with the Indiana State Police Public Information Program. I'm your host, Sergeant Dave Burston, Public Information Officer for the Indiana State Police at the Indianapolis Post. And our guest that we're speaking with, uh, with today is Trooper Dave Verhonick, who works out of the Indiana State Police Youth and Historical Center. And we are talking about the various State Police Youth Career Camps. That's correct. Uh, now we've covered the Pioneer Camp, we've covered the Respect for Law Camp, the Law Camp, and now probably the, the big daddy of them all and the one I'm most familiar with right. from attending and being a counselor is the week-long career camp. That's correct, Dave. It's called the Kiwanis Career Camp, yes. Because, and it's called that because the Kiwanis is a major uh, sponsoring organization for that camp. Kiwanis was on board with us uh, during our inception in 1971 and have been wonderful supporters ever since. And it, uh, I know it, uh, it meant a lot to me uh, going there as a, uh, I was 16 years old when I went to the career camp, right. which would then was held at the, in Lafayette, Indiana at the 4-H uh, Center. Uh, and it was a very, uh, obviously, uh, made a big impact on my life. Now that camp is five days and four nights, correct? That is correct, Dave. And we have two camps this summer. Uh, once again, they're co-ed camps. Mm -hmm. One will be held at Vincennes University and one will be held at Huntington College. What's the cost for that camp? It's $170, Dave, and that includes all the meals, the board, and, and all the little giveaway items that the young people get uh, coming to the camp. Plus, at the end of the camp, as I recall, there are uh, scholarship awards for, uh, for top performing campers. Absolutely. Uh, Vincennes University, uh, the Kiwanis Foundation provides scholarship money, a considerable amount of scholarship money for outstanding campers at our career camps. Now, the experiences, there is a common thread in the experiences as, as someone would progress through the different camps and, and the experiences become more in depth because of the age and maturity of the camper. What would a uh, career camp uh, participant expect to see? Well, here again, just like the other two camps, a lot of fun and exciting police demonstrations. But with the career camp, it's more ran exactly like our, our recruit school, the state mm -hmm. police recruit yes. school would be. There's a lot of, uh, not a lot of classroom time, but there are some classroom time. And we have people from all walks of the legal uh, law enforcement career, like prosecutors, judges, uh, you name it, uh, we bring them in. Well, and and, and every people. avenue, as I recall, from, uh, from the areas of law enforcement, from uh, from the federal government, FBI, Secret Service, exactly. DEA, mm -hmm. uh, city police officers, uh, sheriff's deputies, state police officers, uh, Department of Natural Resources. And as a matter of fact, uh, we really haven't talked a whole lot about the counselors, right. but we have counselors that are not just state police officers, but we have 
other organizations participate. Uh, that's absolutely correct. All of our camp directors are state police officers, but we try to vary our, our uh, exposure to the young people from all aspects of, of law enforcement. So, and, and that makes for a more rounded experience for, for the campers. Exactly. Now, uh, for if someone's been watching our program the whole time and maybe they're getting a little frustrated, all right, you've told us all about these great camps, how do I find out more information? Is there a phone number they can call, an address they can write to? Yes, uh, we have applications available now, as a matter of fact. Uh, the phone number is 1-888-477-9688. That's 888 ISP Youth, actually, and that's a toll free number. Or they can write to me at uh, 8500 East 21st Street in Indianapolis. That's our State Police Museum, which I'd invite everybody to come and see. Or you can pick up applications from Optimus Club members, Lions Club members, Kiwanis Club members, as well as their local state police post. So the, there are all those avenues to, to where you can either call the 888 477 9688 number write to you at that address and we'll be uh, putting that up for people to read right uh, and uh, just stop at the state police post mm -hmm. so and, sure. and they're all listed in the phone book right so now when when you look at all the things that are that are being done to uh, put the camps together what's your personal goal as far as coordinating these efforts very simple maximum exposure to the maximum number of young Hoosiers I believe our programs do make a difference and that difference is helping young people become productive citizens for tomorrow. We're not the total answer, David, but I think we're doing... It's a trying, piece of the puzzle. It's a piece of the puzzle, and we're trying to combat evil in our society with good, and our camps do a lot of good. And it comes back to some of the things that you hear more and more on talk show programs or news programs, uh, talking about accountability and responsibility. And I think especially that common thread runs through all of those camps, uh, be it for the at-risk youth or for the youth that are looking for a law enforcement career, of uh, being accountable and responsible for what they do. Exactly. Now, when we look at time frames, these camps will start running in April, May, June? No, actually, June through August, uh, around the middle of August we end up. So uh, people should try to get their reservations in because it's first come, first serve, and once it's filled up, we hate to turn people away, but we have to. That's correct, yes. So call in, call that number, uh, get in touch with us, see about sending uh, your child, or maybe you have a friend that you might want to refer to attend exactly. at the camp, and we can help them out. We certainly hope that you have enjoyed this edition of the Indiana State Police Public Information Program, and hope that you'll tune in with us for future programs, but between now and then, when you're out and about in the car, please buckle up. The life you save may be your own or that of somebody you love. Till next time, bye-bye.